Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite with a new FinSuite Webflow hack. In this hack, we learn how to like or save items with MemberStack. Hack 31 to 36 is focused exclusively on hacks with MemberStack. MemberStack is the number one way to have membership-based websites with Webflow. In this hack, we're going to look at saving, liking, bookmarking, any type of item, saving it in metadata, and then allowing that user to access it in a later time on their account page or saved items page, or however you wanna set it up. This one is super cool. It gives your site a little bit extra of a personalization touch. Let's see how it works. We're in the live example and we're going to look at saving, liking, thumbs upping different elements and then saving those elements inside the user's member stack account. Since they're saved inside member stack, that means they can be accessed anywhere on the site. Let's go and first see that we are not logged in. We are logged out. And if I go and try and like these items, it's not going to work. Sorry. Now let me go and create a bogus account with a password. I'm gonna sign up and now I will be a signed in user. Great, now I have zero liked items. I'm ready to start liking. And I'll go like 14, two, four, and five. Cool, four liked items, they're right here. Let's go and reload the page. Excellent, it's taking that information from my member stack account and putting it on this page. Let's go to a totally different page. We'll go to hack 31. Now we'll go back to hack 32 and we still see our liked items. So we are probably not going to display these liked items on the same page. This is set up for you to be able to place this anywhere on the site. So this can go in, let's say an account page or a liked items page, read later page, uh, anything. This is, these can be totally separate, liking something and then saving it to the member stack account and then accessing that information somewhere else on the build. We're in designer and we have a whole bunch of classes to be mindful of here. The styling doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want with styling, but we need to make sure that we are defining some important classes here. First, we have a class on our hack 32 like thumb. This is the click target for actually liking the item. So if they just click on the like item, it's not going to like it. They need to click on this class. We're also defining the hack 32 like item as the parent wrapper for the item, the full package that will be put inside of our saved files. And we also need a title. We need some string of text to define if we've liked this element in the past or not. So if we were to remove this text and none of these had text, maybe it was just visual, this hack set up in this way is not going to work. We need to have something to say, hey, was number one added before? Was number two added before? Was number three added before? So this class, hack32 title, is important. Okay, we have our hack32 like row. And the hack32 like row is going to have a copy of itself under our liked items. And the add-on class is going to be super important here. So we have a blank hack32 like row with an add-on class of saved. This is going to have the structure that we need. We have this flex structure from our hack32 like row and saved is going to be the add-on class that we say, hey, when somebody likes this item, we're going to put it inside this div, the hack32 like row saved. And then the last class that we need to be mindful for is this text span. We have a span of hack32 like count, and this is where we are going to insert the total number of liked items that the user has. 
So this could be one item, this could be 5,000 items, it doesn't matter. We are going to continuously update this number as the user likes or dislikes different items in their account. Let's break down this code line by line. Before the closing body tag, we're going to insert our member stack script and then our custom script. It's very important that you use your member stack script up here and not just copy paste what we have inside this clone version. You need this important data member stack ID to be specific to your account. All right, now let's get into the script, what's doing the liking, how we're accessing the metadata and how we are displaying this information on the page. Now, this is a lot of code. Some of this may not make full and complete sense. That's okay. We have all the work here ready for you. You just need to swap out your classes and this is going to work. Also, if you need help, we'll be here for you. Send us a message. We can help out with small little tweaks to make sure that you are using it correctly. All right, this first part of the code, it's in two sections. The first part here should be on the download, save, like files page. Wherever the person is liking the file is where this first part should go. And here we have the first part, and then this is the start of the second part. And the second part should be on the account page or the page that displays the save files. It could also be on the same page. As we see in the live example here, we have the liking and the showing of likes on the same page. It could be wherever you want. All right, let's get into this. When member stack is ready, we are going to run an if statement to see if the user is logged in or not. And we are going to get the metadata object. We're going to search to see if there are liked files already. If there are, we're going to access that information so we can use it later on. If there is no existing metadata file names, we need to create an empty array. We need to initialize the fact that we are saving this information and start saving it. So we're looking for the information, we're getting that object, and if there's an existing one, we use it. If there's not, we're creating a new one. Great, now we're ready to accept this information from the user. When the like button is clicked, the hack32 thumb like button, that's what we put on the little thumbs up. When that's clicked, we are going to run a function. And we are first going to get the name of the liked item. This one's important. Remember, I said that there needs to be some type of text information here because that's what we're going to use to identify what the user liked and didn't like. So in our example, this is one, two, three, four, five. It could be any string of text. Let's say t-shirt blue, t-shirt orange, um, baseball jersey, whatever you want. It just needs to be a string of text. And what we're doing is we're first going to get the name of the liked item and store it in a variable. So what it's doing is it's taking this thumb, it's going to find the closest like item title, and it's going to get the text of the title. And if that name does not already exist in the metadata file names, we're going to push that name to the metadata file names array that we created up here. So if the person likes number three and they have not liked number three before, we are going to add number three to their liked items. If they have already liked it, we're not going to do that. And then we are going to get the number of file names in the metadata or set that number to zero. So if there are file, if there are already files in there, if there are eight like files, we need to get that number so we can say you have five like files. If there are no like files, we're going to also say there are zero like files. And that is what we are doing here. We are setting the number to zero if no file names exist. 
and we are going to set that in metadata. And then we are going to update that metadata once there is a new like. And this is happening live on the page. You saw in the live example, when we liked an item, right away the list underneath updated for us. And that value that you have four liked items, that number updates with us. And that's what we're doing here. We're storing that in the metadata so we can get that information later on. And now we need to visually update this inside the web page. So up here, we are storing it in our member stack metadata. It's being saved in the account. Here, we are targeting our hack32 like count, and we are going to change the text to the number, which is what we established as the amount of liked items. And this is the spam that we created where it says you have X liked items. Great, so now we have the number updated, we have all of our metadata. Now let's visually show where, visually show the actual liked item that we are going to put on the page. Okay, we are going to target this, and this is the item that we are clicking on up here, this item that we are liking, and we are going to find the closest item and we are going to clone it. We're using clone so that we don't take it away from the original list, we just add it or copy it to the new list. So think of it as cut and paste versus copy and paste. This clone is more of a copy and paste. And the paste is append to, and we're going to append it to the hack32 like row saved. This is the blank list that we have underneath our you have four saved items text. So think of this as copy and pasting from the list on the top to the list on the bottom. Cool. And great, that is part one. Now let's get to the part of the script that is needed if you are putting this on a different page. So let's say we are putting it on the account page, the saved items page, somewhere else other than where they are physically liking it right now, we need to get into this second part. If you are separating this second part, you do need to wrap it inside the member stack on ready function. So let's just go and grab this here. Uh, just as an example, you are going to have to wrap this inside the member stack on ready function. You can just start with the if statement here. Okay, great. We are updating the you have X amount of liked items. That X, we're gonna update that first. And we'll start with if the members items number is saved in metadata, we're going to get that value and we're gonna update the text of hack32 like count. We're gonna update it with the text of the metadata of the items number. So right away, we're gonna say, you have four liked items, congratulations. If there is no metadata on this, if they don't have any liked items and they're at zero, we move to the else. If there's nothing saved, we're going to update that same hack32 like count to a text of zero. Great. And if there our file name saved in metadata. We are, we have a number, it's at least one, it could be a hundred, could be one. We are going to run this, we, we have the if statement and if there are items, we're going to run this code in here. And it says, for each liked item, get its name. And if the liked item's name also exists in the metadata's file names, we're going to do that same clone process that we did above. We're going to get that item, find the closest, the closest hack32 like item. We're going to clone and append to the hack32 like row saved. So it's the same process that we were just doing above with putting it on the same page. 
when we have the other page, we need to go into that metadata, get the number of saved items, and then go and make sure that we have the correct items being shown. If they liked 3, 6, 12, and 15, we need to make sure that we are grabbing 3, 12, whatever I just said, and 16, and we are showing that on the account page of these are your liked items. This is specific to this hacks. It is um, not needed for your hack. You can go ahead and remove this. And yeah, that's, that's everything here. Uh, if you have questions, try it out. Send us a message. It's a long one, but it works and it's reliable. Now, if you're doing this part two, there's an important next part of structure that we are going to go over. So please continue watching. We have to have the original list hidden on the page so we can go and copy paste those items to the like. Stay tuned if you're using this part two, if you're saving it on an account page, we're gonna jump back into designer to see how that is set up. This is an important part of structure that we have to set up inside designer if you have your liked items on a different page than the page they're being liked. So in this example, we saw that we're liking it on this page and right under this list, we're showing the liked items. In the case where you're liking on one page and we're displaying the liked items on another page, we have to make sure we have the correct setup inside designer to show those items. What we are going to be doing when we get to custom code is essentially copying and pasting from the like list and then only pasting the items that are liked inside the liked list. So because we're doing that, we need to make sure that this, the original list of what people are liking is accessible with JavaScript. It doesn't have to be visible to the user, but it needs to be accessible. So what I would do in this situation is I'm gonna go ahead and hide this hack32 like row. Let's imagine we're on the account page. We are not allowing anybody to like additional items, but we are showing that they have four liked items. And now let's go inside of our hack32 like row saved. We're going to make sure that has a display flex. And let's go and publish this. I'm gonna go publish and you'll see that the original list is hidden to the user, but we are showing the liked items. And that's what this looks like. Nice, that's exactly what we wanna see. So you need to have this original list on your account page, on your saved items page, because we are actually looking into this hidden item, copying what we need, and then pasting it into this section. Super important, make sure you have this set up if you're working with two different pages. Thank you so much for checking out this hack. Please clone the project. We have the entire hacks project available for clone. Start learning how these hacks work and use them on your live site. We're always releasing new hacks. So if you want to be updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want a super simple plain text email when we release a new hack, sign up at finsuite.com slash hacks dash updates. If you want to request a hack, we'll check it out and see if it's possible in Webflow. Go to finsuite.com slash hacks dash request. That's effing sweet.